What a do YouTube, Paul the Fifth here of Legacy Studios Nash, and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope this is finding you healthy and well. And in my last video, we're talking about a very important subject. It was part one of Signal Flow. We were looking at an analog console, which was a Mackie. In today's video, we are continuing on with that theme, and I've brought out one of my new toys. This is the Personas Faderport 16. It's not an actual console per se, but it's a, an actual controller. So I've got it set up in Pro Tools and Logic. I'm gonna show you how to do that today as well. And we'll be talking about signal flow as it relates to interfaces. I've got three focus rights. I'm talking about how they're all bridged together, how the sound comes in, and how it's routed out to these speakers. If you're ready to learn today, put on that thinking cap, and here we go. Go. Yo, my name is Paul the Fear. Welcome to Legacy Studios Nash. My name is Paul the Fifth. I am your host and I'm also your favorite Indian guy living right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Like I said on my last video, we were exploring signal flow. It was part one of this series and we were looking at signal flow as it pertains to an analog console, which was a Mackie console that I got from Sweetwater. Today, we are continuing on with signal flow. This is part two and we're looking at signal flow as it relates to the digital realm. For this video, I have pulled out a new toy of mine that I got for my birthday about two months ago. It is a Personas Faderport 16. I'm going to show you how to get this set up within Pro Tools and within Logic. And then after that, we're going to take a look at my three interfaces, which happen to be all focus rights. We're going to take a look at the back of those focus rights. I'll show you how they're set up and bridged together with an ADAT cable. And we'll take a look at Pro Tools and Logic, and we're gonna combine things within Focusrite control software. Let's go ahead and get started. With your fader port already plugged in with your power source and your USB cable, making sure it's off. The first step in getting your controller connected to your computer or DAW is this. On channel one and two, we'll hit the select buttons and push the power button Hold it down for just a moment and let it boot up. While it's doing that, I want to let you know that since this is a Personas product, it does default to Studio One as its primary DAW. You might be wondering, so how do I, as the viewer, get my controller to connect to my computer and more specifically the DAW that I want to use? Well, in this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to do that. In just a moment, we're going to look at getting this set up with Pro Tools. But right now, we're going to concentrate on Logic. The Logic protocol here is MCU. That's on channel two. So if we select that, then we notice we have a couple more options. We have your back. We have MCU Ableton, MCU Sonar, MCU Cubase, and then Logic. So that's on channel one. We'll select that. So select whatever DAW that you might be using in Logic. We'll go up here to Logic Pro, then we'll go to Preferences, and then go down here to Advanced, and then we'll wanna make sure that we have this Enable Complete Features highlighted or checked with a blue check mark. Once that's done, we'll close that out. We'll go back up here to Logic Pro, and then we'll go to Control Surfaces and then Setup. A couple easy steps here. If we go to New and Install, over on the next screen, we see Mackie Control. How about that? We click on Add, and then over here we see Mackie Control. Now, in the video I watched from Personas, it said you could right-click here or Control-click on that Mackie Control, and it'll give you an option to Show Hide Inspector. For some reason, I can't seem to get that to work on the software I have, but in the trial and error of making this video and getting this set up, I found that everything is working just fine, so I've skipped that step. But what you can do is go over here to output port. This is where you can control your specific controller. Right here, me, I've got the fader port 16, so it will choose port one. 
Now, if you have the fader port eight or an eight fader control, you can stop right here. Since I've got the fader port 16, I need to add an additional eight channels. Go up here to new and install. On this screen, we see Mackie control extender. We'll go and hit add. Then we go to new and install. And then here where it says input port, it defaults to any. And again, this is where you can choose your specific controller. Me, I have the Personas Fader port 16, so we'll choose port two. That's all there is to it. And that's how you set up your external controller into Logic. I'm gonna reboot the Fader port 16. I do have a channel up here. We shall solo that. Right here, we do see that this is soloed. So I'm gonna move this fader up and down. Now we see that it does work within Logic on my computer. Now that we've done that, let me show you how to get this set up within Pro Tools. Very similar process. On the fader port 16, select on channel one, two, turn the fader port on. Might take just a moment to boot up. It does, and it defaults to Studio One. The protocol for Pro Tools is Huey, H-U-I. We select that, and then over here, we'll go to Exit and then Restart. It'll reboot. While it's doing that in Pro Tools, let's go to Setup. We'll go to Peripherals. Right here on One, let's choose Huey. Then we go over here and Predefine, and this is where you can choose your specific controller. Me, the Fader Port 16, Port 1. Right here, send to predefined fader port 16, port one, eight channels. Now, if you have a control that has eight channels or eight faders, you can stop here. If you have a fader port 16 or anything that has more, you'll want to go down here and add an additional eight channel. So we'll go here to Huey, then we go to predefined, whatever your controller is, me, the fader port 16, and we choose port two. Right here on send two, predefined, fader port 16, port two, eight channels, okay, bam, there we go. Let me solo this channel here. We see that that's soloed and now everything is working fluidly. That is how you set up an external controller through Logic and within Pro Tools. Now let's take a look at my three Focusrite interfaces and their routing. Here is my setup. In the middle, I have got the big screen TV because in my older years, my eyesight has diminished, hence the glasses, and I need to see things a little bit better. Kind of like the big bad wolf. I've got my big monitors here, the BXAAs, and right here, my Atom Audio speakers that my good friend Keiko blessed me with about four years ago. Now this part is all about the interfaces. Right here is the 18i20 interface slash preamp. It is 18 in and 20 out. That means you have 18 simultaneous channels of audio that you can record at once. Underneath this is the Focusrite Octopre Dynamic. And underneath that is the Focusrite Octopre Dynamic Mark II. Something interesting and special about this one I got it in about 2012, 2013 era from Sweetwater, different rep than I have now. But this one here it still works really well. Good, clean pre's and nice signal. And on the back of it, the thing that makes this unique is it's got a firewire port on it. But the way I've got all three of these bridged is through two little cables known as light pipe or ADAP. Do you know what that stands for? ADAT stands for this. So in order to get all three of these connected and talking and working with the Focusrite software and your DAW, in this video we're looking at Pro Tools and Logic. Let's watch this real quick excerpt from Focusrite. Let's have a look at how you expand the channel count with ADAT expansion. In this instance, we're using a Focusrite Octopre Mark II Dynamic. We're also using an ADAT cable, available in all good music stores. Connect the optical out of the Octopre Mark II to the optical in of the Claret Apri. Now that we've connected the units, we need to set the clock source in Focusrite Very control. cool and intuitive excerpt from a video from Focusrite. Thank you so much, Focusrite, for putting that together for us. And if you, the viewer, may have some more questions or seeking more knowledge on ADAT connections, I'm going to have a link for the Focusrite YouTube channel down in the description. 
it is very, very important that we have the back as well as the front of our interface and connections all routed correctly. On the back, you'll see on your ADAT connection or the out, it'll be highlighted in red. It'll glow red for you. On your internal port, it'll show in and it'll be glowing in red. So out, in, out, in. Now that we understand that, let's talk about the internal settings here. So we wanna make sure that we have everything from your interface to your preamps, your control software, and your DAWs all set to the exact same sample rate across the board. The reason and importance for this is, let's say in your DAW you set your sample rate to 48K and your interfaces are at 41. You might be recording vocals, everything may be flowing and going really well, you go to play it back, and due to the sample rate issue, your vocal may sound like a chipmunk. For today's video, I'm using the sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. I'll show you how to get that set up within Pro Tools and within Logic. Let's take a look at the interfaces. This is the main interface. It is the Scarlett 18i20. Underneath that, we have the Scarlett Octopre Dynamic. We do see that is set to a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. Underneath that is the Focusrite Octopre Dynamic Mark II. Down here, we do see that that is set to a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. If you want to change things, you basically hit this right here and it goes through the different sample rates that are available. And then moving up here to our Focusrite control software, if we go to our settings, right here we see our sample rate. You can choose whatever sample rate you want. We're going to choose 44.1K. On the clock source, we'll choose internal. You also have SPDIF and ADAT as options as well. On our Octopre, we do see that that is set for internal on the Mark II, we do see that set for internal as well. One other thing I do want to mention is that right here it says digital I.O. mode, dual ADAP. So that lets us know that all three interfaces are talking and they are digitally connected correctly. Now let's create a session within Pro Tools and in Logic, and I'll show you how to make sure that the sample rates are correct, as well as that we're seeing the 18i20 as our interface. Here in Pro Tools, let's go up here. We'll call this a dat session 1551. I don't know why, because I've probably done this 15 times. Here is our sample rate. We're gonna choose 44.1K. There's our session. Shift command in for a new track. One, perfect. We'll call this PTF box. And since we're here in Pro Tools, let's go up here to our setup and playback engine. Now this is where you can check your specific interface. Right here, we have a list of options. I've got my 18i20, I'm gonna choose that. I'll hit yes and okay, and it's gonna go through a reboot process. Now over here in Logic, I already have a track label PTF Fox, but if we go up here to Logic Pro, and then Preferences, if we come down here to Recording, and in the bottom right corner, Recording Project Settings, and then if we go over here to Audio, we see our sample rate, 44.1K is what we're gonna to choose today. And please, by all means, choose whatever sample rate is best for you, the session, maybe whatever the recording artist or the producer asks, and whatever sounds best for the song. So now that we have that all set up, we looked at getting the sample rate set up across the board. Everything was good there. Everything is locked and connected correctly. Now let me show you how to get signal within Pro Tools and Logic. For this part of the video, we're gonna get signal and I'm gonna show you how it's routed from coming into the DAW to the way that it's routed out. I'm gonna use my Pile microphone. This is the Knockoff 57 that I used in the last video. If you haven't seen it yet, you should go check it out. You can check it out somewhere up in this area here. Go ahead and plug the mic in. We'll plug this into input one on the interface. And in Pro Tools, we'll arm this track here. Now on the interface, what we'll do is we'll turn the gain knob up until we start seeing signal. Test, test, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, three. Hello, there we go. Hello, there we go, we have signal. Let's turn this up. Now, instead of my Atom Audios, we are hearing things out of my mains, which are the BX8As. Now we have some delay. How do we fix that? 
If we go to options, delay compensation, there we go. Much better. Logic. Test, 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 test. One, two, three. And we can see on the interface we have signal right here. And that is how we get signal. Let me take this off and we'll take a look at the mixer. In logic, shortcut X. That brings up our mixer. Let's make this bigger. So in logic, the signal comes in from our source. It hits our preamp and it comes down here to the EQ, just like we saw on the analog mixer. And then it comes down here to effects. So on these effects, that was the insert where we had the Y cable where things would split off, go around and then come right back into the console. That's what these are right here. These are your effects like dynamics, adding a compressor. If you want to add some EQ, you can add that right here. Go to channel EQ. Right now, I'm just adding things, no particular order. Just giving you the idea that this is your channel strip. And then right here, you have your sins. So the way logic works is if we create a bus, let's go to bus one, it does it for you automatically. We'll just call this box. And then right here on this bus, we'll turn that knob. Now, any signal that's coming in here, we'll see it over here. Let's test it out. Test. So now we see the signal coming right here is going to this box as well. If I solo that, we'll see that. If I mute it, it's still being muted from that bus right there. And then everything goes over here to your stereo out. Now on the back end of the interface, there are a couple different spots for outputs. I have my BXAA since they're the biggest on the outside. Then on the inside, I have my Atom Audios, which are seven inch speakers. So I have cables going for both of those. So check this out. Here's a really cool feature about this 18i20. Right here, this alt button is what allows you to switch from speaker to speaker. Here in Logic, let's arm this track. Hello, we'll turn the main volume up. Hello, hello. Check, check, one, two. Now we're coming out of my Atom Audios. Now we're coming out of the BX8As. So Pro Tools, here we go. To go from one screen to the other, Command plus equals. We'll arm this track and here's our signal. One, two, three, not talking real loud. So let's bump this gate up a little bit. Check, one, two, three. There we go, negative 15. We've got our signal, things are coming in. And then here's our inserts, A through E. And then something within Pro Tools, this is kind of cool, check this out. If you click right here, you can do preamps, instrument, more inserts, and more sends than real-time properties. Here's your mic pre's, inserts, inserts, sends, and sends. Okay, so here's all your inserts. So if we wanted to go to EQ, let's just do this. There we go. So if we wanted to do another plugin, let's say dynamics, let's do a limiter. Then if we come down here and go to dynamics and let's see, Kilo Hearts limiter, there it is, beautiful. So that comes down here and then we have our sends. So to create a send, we'll actually have to create a bus. So if we go up here to track or you have your key command, so we'll go to new and then we'll do one stereo aux input create. Okay, so we've got all these things here. Where is my box? Lead box. Okay, and we'll take that output and we'll take that to bus lead box. So now we have signal right there. If we want our master fader, we'll have to go to track new one stereo master fader. So now we have things coming from our PTF box. We have it going to my vocal aux as well as the master. So that's how things come into Pro Tools and Logic. It gets routed to an aux and then goes back out. Now, let's listen to it. Let's turn this back up. Now we are going out of the Atom Audios. Now we're coming out of the BX8As. Overall, that's a pretty clear signal. We need some EQ and some of the things like that but that's for another video. Right. Wrapping up our video today, this has been all about digital signal flow. In the start of the video, I'll show you how to get an external controller hooked up to Pro Tools and Logic. And then we looked at the flow of the signal in those two DAWs. So if you happen to learn anything or gain some knowledge today, I sure would appreciate those thumbs up. Maybe smash that subscribe button and join the Legacy Studios family. 
Thank you to all the new subscribers that have been watching and leaving comments about the gun videos. Once my neck heals up from the surgery, I should be able to go to the range with ITT once I can wear my hearing protection. Let's grow this channel together. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Paul, the fifth of Legacy Studios, and I will see you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.